friends, it's good to see you again today. I hope that you are having a great week wherever you are and whatever you're doing. So I wanna tell you about something really cool that I figured out how to do this week. So you might have seen this on YouTube or maybe you've done it in school or something, but I just figured out how to do something really neat. I can take a piece of paper, like a small piece of paper, like a square, like that big, and I can make it fit over my head. Pretty cool, right? It's pretty neat how you do it. It's simple. All you do is like fold the paper in half and then you cut some lines and then you open it up and then you just put it on your head. Pretty cool, right? Can you imagine how I can do that without actually seeing me do it? Would it be easier if I showed you exactly how to do it? So I could demonstrate that. Would you like me to do that? Okay, so here's my piece of paper that I can fit right over my head. See how it works? No? Maybe it's easier if I show you how to put the lines on the paper. Does that help? So it's a paper folded in half, and then you draw some lines, and then you cut them. And it fits right over your head. Simple, right? Oh, you still don't understand how it works? Let me show you. So as I'm cutting these lines on this little piece of paper, we're gonna talk for a minute about what it means to use our actions versus our, just our words. So we often talk about like all the things that we can do, all the things that we're good at. Um, we talk about things that are important to us, right? But sometimes we talk about things and we say things even if we don't actually do them. So kind of like keeping your word or keeping your promises. Can you imagine if your mom or your dad or your grandparents asked you to like help them do something and you said, yeah, sure, I'll do that. And then you didn't actually do it. That's kind of what Jesus is talking about. All right, so let me show you. So I have these cuts in the paper. It looks kind of like that. And you can find instructions to do this on YouTube if you would like. Um, so yeah, imagine if, let's see, let's pretend that you have a mom who came in and asked you if you could help her do the dishes or help her do the laundry. And you said, yeah, sure, I'll be right there. And then your brother or your sister was also asked to help, but your brother or your sister said, no, I don't want to help you. Who do you think is right? We often would say that, that the kid who said, yeah, I'll help is the person who's right. But then guess what happens? So if you're the one who said, yeah, sure, I'll help you in a minute, and you never actually helped, did you do the right thing? Or what about your brother or your sister who said, nah, I don't wanna help you, but then sat there and thought about it and then got up and went and did whatever your mom asked you to do. Did that person do the right thing? So just because we say things like, yeah, I'll do that, or yes, I will help you, if we don't actually follow through with our actions, then it doesn't really matter, right? Okay, so let me back up and show you. So I just cut my paper with all these different strips and then watch what happens. Do you believe that I can make this piece of paper fit around my head? It worked! So this tiny little piece of paper I could make fit around my head. Pretty cool, right? And if you use a bigger piece of paper, I think that would also work. So I'm going to move this down, kind of like a necklace for a minute. So we're going to read a story from the Bible, just like we always do. And this is going to be in the book of Matthew, chapter 21. So we've been reading from the book of Matthew for quite some time now. And this, this story is not in the Spark Story Bible. If you happen to have a Whirl Story Bible at home, you can find this on page 242. Otherwise, you can just get any old Bible that you have at home, and you can open up to Matthew chapter 21, and we're going to be on verse 23. So Matthew chapter 1, verse 23. The chief priests pushed through the crowd of people in the temple. They had some questions for Jesus. Who said that you could teach about God, they asked Jesus. Who gave you the authority to heal people? And why do you have the power to create miracles? Jesus stopped teaching and replied, Before I answer, I have a question for all of you. And Jesus was really good at this. Jesus always asked questions when he was asked a question. Jesus asked them, who gave John the Baptist the authority to baptize people? The leaders began to argue with each other. Was the right answer God or the people or something else? 
They answered Jesus, we don't know. Jesus frowned at the leaders who could not agree. Instead of answering the chief priest's questions, Jesus told them a parable. Here's the parable. A father asked his older son to pick grapes in the vineyard. No, father, I don't want to do that, the son complained. But later, he changed his mind and picked grapes for his father. Then the father went to the younger son. Will you please pick grapes today? Yes, father, I'll pick the grapes. But the younger son did not actually go and pick one grape. Jesus challenged the chief priest with this story. God hears our words and wants to see our actions. Words and actions go together. If you say you love God, show it in what you do. Wow, this is kind of like what we were talking about, like our actions and words. But you want to know what's interesting in this story? So there was a son, a, a father who asked his two sons to go pick grapes in the vineyard. And one son said, no, I don't want to do that. The other son said, yeah, I'll do that. And never actually went to pick the grapes. But the son who said no, and then went to pick them, we often would think that that son made the right choice, right? But what Jesus doesn't say is who was right. Everybody thought that the one who picked the grapes was the one who was right, but Jesus just kind of didn't answer that. And Jesus says that your actions need to match your words. So when our parents ask us to do things and we say yes, but then we don't actually do them, our actions are not matching our words. And if we say no, but then we end up doing something, our words aren't matching our actions. So it's really important that we think about the things that we do and the things that we say and make sure that they match up, right? So we often think that like we make good decisions all the time and sometimes we don't, but that's okay. We're, none of us are perfect, but we can always do a little bit better, I think. There is someone though who doesn't have to do better because this person is always, always doing the right thing. This person's words and actions always match up. Do you know who that is? It's definitely not me. And it's definitely not your you. It's definitely not your parents. So that person is Jesus. Jesus always does and says the right things. And Jesus is kind of perfect because Jesus is God's son, right? So Jesus' promises are always true. What Jesus says, Jesus will do. And the same with God. God makes all these promises and tells us that God will never leave us. And that is absolutely true. God never leaves us. Jesus loves us. Jesus came to earth because God sent him to come and do it. God didn't need to do that. God wanted to do it. And God followed through with God's promises, even though Jesus had a really hard life. So that's kind of a cool thing, right? Jesus always um, matches, Jesus' actions and words always match up. And that's a pretty awesome thing. We can do better. We are never going to be perfect like Jesus. But we can do a much better job, I think, about having our words and actions match. So this week, I think it would be really fun and really cool if each of you might be able to think about ways that you could have your actions match the words that you say. So when you think about all of the things that you say to people, all of the right answers that you have, if the things that you're doing don't match the things that you're saying, then we have some work to do. And I know that that's true for every single one of us. We all have work to do. But we get to do those things because God does them for us and Jesus does those things for us. So we don't have to feel bad. We should be really excited. We get to be so excited about the things that we can do. So I think we can pray. So fold your hands and close your eyes and do what you do when you pray. Dear God, thank you for Jesus. Thank you for Jesus doing all the things that he says he will do. And thank you for the words that Jesus has for us that remind us that our actions need to speak louder than our words too. This week, help us to think about the things that we say and whether or not we're following through with the things that we say. Help us to do a better job of listening and keeping our promises and help us to do a better job of being patient with one another. 
God be with the people who are hurting or sad or frustrated this week. Remind them that your promises are true for them too. And if there's any way that we can help show people who you are, help us to do those things. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen, my friends. I hope you have a great week. And if you're interested, you could probably Google or go on YouTube to see if you can also demonstrate how to do something pretty cool like this. And maybe you could use a bigger piece of paper too. I bet if you're really creative, you could figure out how to get your whole body through a regular size piece of paper, not just your head, your whole body. So if you can do that, let me know. I would love to see some pictures of that. So until we meet again, have a great rest of your week. Be well, be safe, and continue to love your neighbors. Goodbye.